We put out a song, totally a political song, hit the Billboard charts, did really well. Carter actually over here produced it. And when they played it on their show, they played it in such a way. I, I don't understand. I, I don't oh, agree no. with what you're about to say, but please proceed. Actually. Right. So if yeah, it, so I don't agree, that's if you happens. listen to it, yeah. they they played it in such a way that the quality was dramatically reduced, and then they said it sounded like Nickelback. Sam Cedar is blacklisted. No, who in the right wing ecosphere? Has, right wing? No, I'm yeah. talking about mainstream. I'm talking about who, corporate who platforms. Specifically, because you've made this allegation multiple times. I would like to know who. When Emma, in the middle of conversation, abruptly said, why do you think your show inspired a neo-Nazi mass shooter? There was a mass shooter. As I oh no, careful. And they were found to be a really big fan of their no, show. that's a lie. That is not true. That is not true. I heard that uh, Brianna Wu was on Tim Pool. Is this true? Oh, it's live right now. And there are many people who believe Gamergate was the beginning of the culture war. I think that's a fair assessment. There were certain things... <laughs> Wait, what? I think that culture war stuff has probably been going on in the United States for quite a while. Probably quite a while before Gamergate even, believe it or not. My name is Brianna Wu. I think uh, I'm a retired four-star general in the culture war. Uh, uh, today, I run a pack with uh, Jenk Uger over uh, at TYT. Very proud to do that. And, you know, Tim, uh, I know I've said some... Uh, snarky things about you online so i appreciate you inviting me to oh, everybody's invited yes oh no right on absolutely and then we have alex baldwin do you want to grab that mic that's me uh I hope. oh i thought holy shit this works um i'm alex uh i'm also known as the hat man this hat right here is what i'm known for uh i was the head moderator on reddit make your jokes now please um before uh, kotaku in action which was the uh, gamergate subreddit and Basically, that's how I built my not-so-cult following. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, I consider us friends at this point. Mm -hmm. you know, he literally ran the Gamergate subreddit, Tim. And something the two of us feel very strongly about is a lot of people made money and got what they wanted from mm -hmm. Gamergate. Neither of us got anything we were fighting for. And I think what I really came here to talk to you about, Tim, is you know, I think the entire premise of your show, Culture War, I think it's flawed. Ooh. I think you have two veterans here on different sides have really come to the conclusion that this is not a way forward for our country. It's a war that cannot be won. Well, what's what's the premise that's flawed? That we need to have a culture war and we need to be fanning these issues that are on the side, having very hyperbolic, uh, you know, approaches to talking uh -oh. to each other. The thing I've learned. But after, we, we don't we don't we do don't that. do that. I think I have a different assessment, respectfully. But what I wanted to say is. The conclusion I've come to is, I think if you're really serious about making women's lives better in this country, you know, talking and screaming at each other on Twitter, I don't think it's an effective way forward. I think we need to be far more focused on policies that improve women's lives. And I think that's one of the main thing that feminists miss during Gamergate. So uh, in, in, in what way, I guess, would you say that How does he this fan show the flames? engages in that kind of yeah. behavior? You know, I, Tim, so uh -oh. one, of, one of my goals today is I don't want to be contentious with you. Um, oh, you no. Know, I, I did watch a lot of your show preparing for this. I think that respectfully you uh -oh. tend to really inflame these culture war points I, I watched your segment with jackson hinkle i've seen how you talk about the left and joe biden and democrats in general i i think it's very hyperbolic i don't think it's good for the country or the conversation Ooh. so anything in specific that we could use oh, as a launching God. point to discuss do you really do you want this whole time to be talking about you i'd really rather talk about the issues that, i'm asking sense. you to bring up an issue that we could use as a launching point to discuss to be fair you kind of like called him out so like I could I'm I'm sympathetic towards him, empathetic even towards him wanting to be like, well, hold on, if you're gonna say I do this, let's specifically talk about what I do. I think that's I think that's probably fair for Tim to ask. Little bro can't crop the frame properly, but play factories for free. Sure. Because just just saying like your show does bad isn't anything I can really it's elaborate like, on. That's fair. That's fair. So let's talk about the uh, the Jackson Hinkle. No, oh, I tell you, how about the Liberty Safe? Uh, we have sympathetic and empathetic mixed. Sympathetic, I think, is you um, can understand somebody's pain. Empathetic is you feel it, I think, generally because you've experienced it before. No? Am I mixing those up? Okay. Yeah. Uh, thing you did yesterday. I watched this segment on that. 
and you're talking about, well, leftists believe this, leftists want to take away your guns. I didn't you say know, that. Leftists or the uh, people on your show did. You know, no, no leftists are going to be upset about this. Uh -oh. Nobody, nobody, don't nobody said that. Uh -oh. I, people so, go watch the segment. Right, and, and for sure. So, so one thing we're very clear about is that sure. leftists are pro-gun. Some leftists are pro-gun. A, a, a large yeah. portion, like the John Brown Gun Club, the Red Guard, you've got a lot of organizations mm -hmm. that uh, are more revolutionary, are very pro-gun. So we didn't say that. That's not something we, we talked about. Uh -oh. I, I hear what you're saying. I respect it. I watched the segment. I came to a different conclusion. My point here is I think there are, even if I will give you the premise just for the sake of a discussion here, your show is not part of this. I think it is, but just to move forward, let's say other shows are doing this. I think we are so, I think we are madmen with our hands around each other's throats, and I think we cannot let go. Um, you, know, you did a segment with Jackson Hinkle that I found tremendously disturbing. And, you know, I think he was here talking about a bunch of, frankly, pro-Kremlin talking points. And the whole time I'm watching it, Tim, I'm thinking about how the whole reason that Vladimir Putin chose to invade uh, Ukraine at this particular moment is we are so divided. He sees us as weak and stupid and unable to agree on anything. And I think January 6th was really his moment that he knew America was too divided to stop what he wanted to do. And I do think that division is a, a function of the culture war. I agree. Yeah. And I think, uh, I actually agree. Uh, Vladimir Putin took the opportunity, January 6th being a component of the division in America, mm -hmm. to say, there, if, if war is to escalate in Eastern Europe or in, say, the Pacific Theater, the U.S. is in serious trouble because it can't even agree with itself right. how to respond to these things. That's right. So if you've got uh, Republicans just saying no to funding uh, uh, Ukraine's, uh, the war in Ukraine, right. and Democrats saying yes to funding it, Vladimir Putin, China, they've, got, they've basically got uh, carte blanche to a certain degree because the United States, if it escalates to a direct confrontation with NATO, which it, on the, it's on the verge of doing, sure. We, we, we vote out. We, we, we voted out. I mean, you're going to get a lot of people who are going to vote for someone like Donald Trump to avoid getting involved sure. in international conflict. So just a quick fact check. Um, you said a moment ago that uh, you brought up liberals that support guns. There are a lot of liberals Well, that leftists support and guns. liberals are different. Sure. Fair enough. There are a lot of people on the left that support guns. When I watched the Republican uh, primary debates a couple of days ago, yeah. it sure seemed like the only person there that was not for funding Ukraine was Vivek. So mm -hmm. um, I do think there's a lot of people with national security experience in the Republican Party that support uh, what we're doing in Ukraine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Vivek, I believe, was staunchly opposed to it. Yeah. Uh, Nikki Haley, I think, was probably the most in favor of it. Yeah. Mike Pence was very for it right. as well. Yeah. Nikki Haley was very, very much like right. boisterous. I mean, they, they, they all were in favor of U.S. intervention in Eastern right. Europe. Right. Yeah. Don't you think their foreign policy experience might like be why the right and the left are kind of agreeing on this at the top levels but the the right and the left aren't agreeing on it yeah Tr trump's position is anti the funding of ukraine his position is he stops the war overnight if he gets elected whether that's true or not he's got the majority of the republican primary uh, uh polling sure so he's he's the clear favorite to be fair though i mean if you were to combine all while that's true um Donald Trump is not popular because of his foreign policy takes. Donald Trump could literally say the exact opposite. Donald Trump could come out and say, we need to support Ukraine harder than we've ever supported a country before. And his entire base would just be lockstep with him. Donald Trump can literally say almost anything and his base will probably follow him. Minus DeSantis and Vivek, you've probably got around, what, 28 to 30 percent GOP support for intervention in Ukraine. But I think if you actually do polling directly on uh, U.S. involvement in Ukraine, it's 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 lower than that in the Republican Party. Yeah, I think that, you know, what I find in my job, which is you know, running a, a PAC and doing a lot of polling and missions like that, I, I do find that Ukraine is not a top thing. And, you know, one of the things I think people like you and I sometimes forget is we're tuned into this stuff 24 seven. I subscribe to like five oh. newspapers. I watch every show I can all day on YouTube. You know, normal people are out there, they're thinking about drug prices, they're thinking about their house, they're thinking about inflation. Does they're that work? not as focused on foreign policy as you and I are. Every single uh, presidential administration since George Bush has wanted to do a pivot to Asia. 
as far as our foreign policy. There's a whole world out there besides, uh, you know, the Middle, the Middle East, East and they in Russia, and they've wanted to look at, at China, which I think both you and I would agree is an increasing threat to the national security of the United States. And I think when Putin invaded Until. Ukraine, I think there were a lot of people in the Biden administration that were thinking about the domestic agenda that they um, had really focused on, that they would be unable to really push forward as much as they believed because uh, Vladimir Putin was going to be such a mission priority. Yeah, if How you go back to you pay in the last right year before the transition, 2016 into seven. How much tax you pay in the last year? I don't know. Why the f*** are you asking me? I think like 15K. Ha <laughs> ha! Tax fraud, baby. Hell yeah. Team with Donald Trump. Trump the, was literally uh, booed by his own supporters for talking positive about right. the that vaccine. Was the conversation Meanwhile, Biden China says if you don't vote for me, you ain't black. You're out of your depth on this one. True, bro. I love the high level political analysis. Like, remember seven years ago when Biden misspoke and then that he actually really means that if you don't vote, vote for him, you're, he's not black. Like, nice. High level political analysis, dude. High level political analysis. Nice. Very intelligent. Was. Yeah. So I don't I don't think the past administrations have I mean, maybe they say they want to pivot to Asia. Mm -hmm. But if you take a look at the policies regarding the Middle East, Syria, Turkey into Ukraine right. and Europe right. with Russia and their gas monopoly and things, I think this is one of the things that I found that was super interesting for U.S. tax law. If you want to claim somebody as a dependent for to, for them to be a dependent, you have to have them for at least half the year. Right. Um, and something that I think is, like, Platt, is super clearly wrong about politics. Fascinating is when you guys pay me into PayPal for like my subscriptions, one of the things that I get is I get a whole bunch of information about the people that PayPal me because all of it, like PayPal for instance is a 1099K to the government. So I get like all the tax information, all the people that subscribe to me. So I get your social security numbers. So one thing that I think is super funny is at the end of the year, what I'll usually do is I just ship my, <laughs> I ship my tax guy like a big Excel sheet with all of your guys' social security numbers. And I'm like, see how many of these people I can claim as dependents. Like these guys definitely watch me for more than six months. Like I can tell by your subscription history. And usually we'll process, I think it was anywhere from, I think last year it was like 560 people or whatever. And for every single person that I claim as a dependent, I get to add to my standard deduction basically. So if you guys are out there and you subscribe to me, you don't file your taxes, I'm basically just claiming all of you guys and eating your deductions up. So, you know, that's how I, <laughs> So I minimize my tax footprint, you know? Is exactly where they want to be. I think I think the United States feels forced into it. I mean, I think you and I would probably agree that our long stay in Afghanistan. Is your game on stream lag? Oh shit, sorry, I have. How do you trust a woman? If you're gonna hook up with a woman and she's like, oh, I'm on the pill. How do you know? You ever wonder that? Like, what if she's just lying? I like the ones that have the arm thing. What's your take on some peer-reviewed papers in regards to COVID not showing the actual raw data? I'm sure you've talked about it, but I probably missed. Not showing what not what raw data. I like the ones with the arm thing because you can just reach up and feel it, and then you check, and you're like, ha -ha, you "Are see? you familiar with the debate term negative pregnant? When someone like this says, give me a specific example, that's what I see. They're just looking to become negative pregnant by arguing semantics." At least with IUDs, you can feel it. I don't think you're supposed to, but with a lot of them, you absolutely can feel the string in the back. I don't know why. I feel like with 50% of the girls Just I've run with, you can feel the, um, you can feel the, you can feel the string in the back, which is sometimes a very weird feeling. And was a serious foreign policy mistake that frankly got friends of mine killed. Um, you know, there have been a lot of missteps in trying Ask to- Ask her if it affects her period at all. If she has any real answers, she's on it. I don't think, I don't think you can, girls and periods are like, every girl has a different period. I don't think you can ever ask questions about it and try to ascertain any information whatsoever about them. The way that girls and hormones work, even with like things like plan B, bro, like I know girls, I know some girls that just like chug plan B for fun. There was a girl that I um, hooked up with like a couple months ago. And I remember after we hooked up, she had the implant in her arm. So everything should have been fine. She's a decent well off person. And she was like, oh yeah, like after we blah, 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 I took plan B anyway. And I'm like, why would you do that? Like, isn't that like, isn't that kind of rough? And she's like, oh no, like sometimes I just like take plan Bs after hookups, like just in case it's like an extra thing. And I'm like, isn't that like, okay. And she's like, no, it doesn't do anything for me. And then I met other girls who will take plan B. And when they take plan B, it's like three days of like some of the worst cramps they've had in their life. Um, 
Yeah, and then same, different girls have different periods. Some girls say that fucking different IUDs fuck with them, different pills fuck with them, different TV shows fuck with them. Like, yeah, I don't know. It feels like everybody, when it comes to periods, it feels like everything is... Draw from that region. I just... My, my main point here is I feel like you've mischaracterized what the Biden administration wants to be focused on. I think this but, but, is something but, they feel forced to focus on. That, that's fine, but that's an, that's an opinion based on the assessment of facts. Sure. So, well, the girls you fucking have, you never had a pregnancy scare? Um, I ever had a pregnancy scare? I, I Believe it or not, I try to be somewhat careful. The biggest pregnancy scares I had were always in relationships. <laughs> well, I mean, that's... I mean, I had I had the biggest pregnancy scare. Um, he was born in 2011. You can March 11th, his name is Nathan Bonnell. He said Bonnell. Trump supporters <laughs> would blindly follow anything he says, and I just provided a counterexample, while also highlighting the hypocrisy that black people will vote Biden, even though he allegedly misspoke racism. Um, he allegedly misspoke racism. I don't think he was misspeaking racism. I think if you're not fucking retarded, you listen to what Biden was saying. What Biden was saying is that if you're if you if you vote if you don't vote for Biden, you probably don't support the black community. That was the argument that he was making. Which, if you want to call it race or whatever that's fine but at least deal with what he was saying what i'm saying people will follow trump no matter what no matter what trump says what i'm saying is that conservatives that support trump don't really support trump on policy they support him on twitter profiles well not twitter i guess that's truth social they support him like on the memory and i feel like this is evidenced over and over again by the fact that like when i ask trump people like why do you support trump like what policy does he have do you like like trump isn't even really a republican he's not even really a conservative and i think anybody even looking at him early in the election kind of knew that this guy's like a New York real estate billionaire guy. Like, he's not really traditionally conservative in any way, size, shape, or form. He's on his, like, eighth marriage. The dude f***s porn stars. He's been to, like, everybody's wedding. He did, like, TV shows and shit. Like, he doesn't fit the typical... What about Reagan? Uh, no. He doesn't fit the, um... For actors. He doesn't really fit the archetype. And I don't think even the social values that much of a conservative at all. He just kind of, like, says and does shit and, like, memes. And I think that, um... I think that that's generally... Like, the gist of what I get from most conservatives when I ask them about Trump is that Trump owns the libs. Um, and that's generally, like, the thing that they like the most about him is the fact that he owns the libs so hard, you know? <clears throat> if we're looking at a Biden administration that's put, a, you know, a quarter of a trillion dollars into $250 billion, mm -hmm. right, into, uh, into Ukraine, to that conflict specifically, and if you take a look at the history... 250 but I thought it was, like, $112 billion so far the 2000s with policy on, on Syria, mm -hmm. the Qatar Turkey pipeline, Gazprom, et cetera, uh, they're doing exactly what they've been doing for the past several decades. Yep. They're, so I think this is where, you know, I've watched your show. Um, you know, I know sometimes like when Emma was on, you crit criticized her for not watching your show. I actually watched a lot of your show preparing for this. <clears throat> um, so I think one of the, the ways that I would differ with you is I think, generally speaking, direct- Something that Brianna would benefit so much from um, that I try to do is, I really think that when Brianna says things like, I watch a show, all I do is, she needs examples. It's I think it would be very, very, very important for her to start giving examples for like, when you see watch my show, when you see this, what do you mean by that? Like, what are you actually watching? What are you doing? I think that would be really helpful for her. When I've watched your show, I feel like you feel the United States is strongest when we withdraw from the world and we are not an active participant in geopolitics. Well, I mean, well, hold sure. on. Saying- If I'm mischaracterizing you, please right. let me know. Yeah, yeah. Saying, saying putting 250 billion into, a, into, the, into the Eastern European war front mm -hmm. when we're not prioritizing, say like lead pipes in Flint, Michigan. What in, are you talking about? We spend so much domestically. Do people think that the United States government just doesn't spend on its population? Do people think that we just don't have how many hundreds, hundreds of billions of dollars went into our infrastructure as part of the American uh, recovery plan? Like, what is he talking about? How much money went into our infrastructure as part of the Inflation Reduction Act? Like, wait, like, both of those bills dwarfed the, even the military aid we've sent to Ukraine. Like, what are you talking about? Is it, 100%. Right, so how about before we decide that we're gonna fund Ukrainians in their war with Russia, not even a NATO nation sure. or an EU nation. I mean, why don't we help the people in Newark, Pittsburgh, Flint, etc. who we have- We do? What do you mean? And their pipes and their kids are dying. Why don't, why don't we, sure. why don't, how about we get universal health care before we go to war? Look, I'm 100% with you. There's no- Why do you think this is an either or? Conservatives don't want universal health care. If you're upset about universal health care, don't talk to Ukrainians, talk to Republicans excuse for us having failed on that just as a fact check uh -oh, it the is fact check that many of the weapons that we have sent to ukraine 
we're sitting here in the United States in warehouses. There was a huge cost to us keeping that and maintaining it. And many of them were scheduled for decommission anyway. And there's mm. an under-discussed Forgive me, Bear. I knew not what I was speaking ways, of. We're getting rid of these things that we were going to have to take apart anyway. And there's a cost savings there. That said, you know, I fully agree that we should be focused more on domestic policy in this country. I think um, if you look at the accomplishments of the Biden administration, the Inflation Reduction Act yep. is clearly you know, his biggest um, accomplishment, right? It's not it, enough domestic. What, what specifically in the Inflation Reduction Act would you point to? Oh, gosh. Oh, my God. You really? Google it and go line by line. Is he going to try to get her on, like, do you know the exact provisions and the exact budgeting and the exact line items for every? What do you mean by that? Uh, you could Google it. You like to Google it. You should Google on the show right now. Uh, well, I think the fact that, uh, you know, gas prices are, what is it, a dollar, uh, dollar 80 less than their peak in 2022. I think a national uh, unemployment rate of 3.5%. Uh, you know, the United States is. He's going to bring her back and ask, what about on the IRA did that? But I think uh, we have gotten it under control faster than other developed countries. I think it's been a good success. I wonder, though, oh, it's, it's, it's hard for me to give an assessment on that considering. COVID overlapping the Trump administration and the Biden administration. So setting a metric on how much we've improved is difficult considering COVID lockdowns. I agree. And, then I, and just to add on to that, I think if the Biden administration continues to say the economy is good, the economy is good, more Americans are working than ever before. I, can we swear on this show? I we try not to, but if okay. you do, it's We're whatever. We're effed. We're effed <laughs> if uh, we continue down this path. People don't feel that way. People, people feel like things are getting worse. That's right. And now you've got, uh, I don't know exactly where we're at with the Fed raising interest rates, but yeah. it's getting quite alarming, I in agree. fact. And, and, uh, I'm getting quite alarm. I, it Has it happened yet? Can somebody tell me? We, I have heard about this mythical recession for so long. Where is it? It's coming, right? Eventually, right? Because unemployment numbers are still incredibly low. Um, it feels like housing prices are going up. They probably needed to, right? I think they were probably booming a little bit too hard for a while. Um, I think generally wages and everything are rising. Year over year inflation has returned to, I think, about where it's supposed to be. Um, there's got to be a nicer, easier way to do this. Housing is still at a target. Yeah, housing is probably going to be high for a while. Housing, I don't think, uh, slightly uneducated, I, maybe if an economist wants to correct me, I could be wrong. But um, housing... I don't think housing can be fixed by the Federal Reserve. Housing can't be fixed by the Fed. Housing can't be fixed by interest rates. I think housing is going to come down to cities have to start making different decisions about how they build and how they zone. I think that's the only way we're going to see anything happen with regards to housing. It's, it's, it's not going to come from the federal government. That's just my feeling on that. I could be wrong, but... I'm wondering if, you know, as student loans start kicking in, the people who haven't been paying over the past several years are not going to be able to start paying now. I agree. So it doesn't seem like, you know, whatever the Inflation Reduction Act may do, I do think the name is one of those, right, they, they, give, they give these bills names to make it look like, you know, Patriot Act or whatever. Right, right, right. But I'm, I'm, I'm quite... Hold on. The Inflation Reduction Act was named the Inflation Reduction Act because the spending of the bill, I believe, was matched with uh, cuts with either cuts or revenue. So the idea was it was supposed to be a deficit neutral piece of legislation. And that's why I think it was ultimately called the Inflation Reduction Act, right? It's, it's not just like a, it's not just a random that they called it that, right? Concerned about where- or it might have even been a budget surplus bill. That might be true too, I don't remember. He goes, and I'm not an economist. I just, I can see what the Fed is doing and I can see how, uh, I mean, you got two big indicators Socially, which is like Michael Burry saying, or the reports that Michael Burry took a $1.6 billion. Who cares? People only know about him because of the big short. Like, this guy made one good f***ing call, and people think he's like a f***ing econ genius that can predict every sector of the economy. This guy also said a bunch of retarded shit about crypto and Wall Street bets and everything, too. Like, dollar short against the U.S. stock market. Ooh, and he's the guy from that. the big short. Wow. Right. And so I'm wondering if he's looking at it similar. <laughs> Kill me. Kill me. Early to how the housing crisis happened in that the government gives out student loans to people who don't have a career and yeah. there's no indication they'll be able to pay that money back. Yeah. And now with student loans kicking back in, we may be looking at something similar. Not the same because I don't know. I don't think they're doing student loan backed securities or anything like that. But when these people stop paying, there's going to be a hiccup 
which is going to cause a serious issue. More, more importantly, to add to that, if young people can't buy houses, yeah. then the housing market ceases to exist. Yeah. I mean, it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to plummet. When we're looking at millennials into their mid- The housing market is never going to plummet. The, the problem with houses right now is that there um is is that there um there aren't enough of them. Hold on. <sighs> the um ha the housing prices are never plummeting. Like there is a huge demand to live in cities. That demand is not going away. Like they're going to continue to become unaffordable. They're going to hit some equilibrium price where new people probably you probably just can't buy a house in a big city unless you're a 34 year old guy who's had a career for a while. Um, like that's just unfortunately that's just where we're at right now. But it's not going to like housing. It's not going to be like oh god like oh no the housing market is unless he means something different by plummeted. But yeah. The late 30s. What is the demand, though? The demand is everybody in the country wanting to live in eight cities. <laughs> I mean, I, but I mean, like, truly, even in even in ordinary cities, I think um, housing is, is starting to become expensive as well, too. So, I mean, yeah. Lycan says you're wrong. Destiny, you're wrong. Michael beat the market by significant margins for years before the housing crisis. Cool. Good job, Lycan. <clears throat> and they can't buy homes. Yeah. Then... Then what do you do? I mean, the price of the value of the house has to collapse. Tim, I'm 100 percent there with you. I think like I, ha, like it's never going to collapse. Two quick questions for you: one, would college costs decrease if the Fed limited lending to students? Two, is capital gains tax ethical considering the income is taxed twice? I mean, technically, all of your income is taxed like 15 different times from here. I think capital gains is fine. Um, limiting the money to students, maybe. Here, this is just what I think. Okay, I think that um, I think. I've said this before, and I'm going to start coming down hard on this, okay? I think if you go to an out-of-state school, I think you're retarded. Um, if you go to an out-of-state or a private school, unless you've got a really good reason to, you're you're retarded and nobody should help you. F you. You're driving up the cost for everybody. I saw somebody trying to make posts on my subreddit yesterday talking about how um, talking about how stupid I was or out of touch I was about tuition prices. And then these motherfuckers go on to quote the sticker price for education okay i don't know if you guys know this but almost nobody pays the sticker price for tuition or room and board anywhere that's not how college works it's not how college prices work there are and Pell Grants, there are 50 million different scholarships, there's 50 million different school-related and other related financial aid programs. Like, nobody is paying the sticker price for tuition. Not to say that some people don't pay a lot, but I'm just saying that, like, school is, college is still a really good bet, and it's incredibly affordable in the United States, as long as you're not doing weird autistic shit, like going to out-of-state private schools for your, like, mechanical engineering degree. You don't need to do that. You just don't need to do that. I don't know. I don't know why people are going to out of state, even out of state state schools. Just go to your state school, bro. Or I'm speaking from very limited experience here, but I will say, or go to Europe sometimes, because people in this is the impression I get from my very limited time looking at European universities and, and watching Europeans be in the United States. American state schools, an American state college is a fucking, is a is massive. People will look at like, I don't want to go to the University of Nebraska at Omaha. Bro, UNO, my college, is probably bigger than like 98% of colleges across across Europe. <laughs> Most people have never even heard of this school before. State schools in the United States are fine. You've got so much opportunity. You've got so much shit going on. Unless my, unless my state school is just bigger than like... Um, it literally depends on the state, bro. Does it? I feel like most state schools are pretty fucking big. Where is my, um, I think this is only like one of our campuses, right? I think this is only one of the UNO, I think there, are, I think there is a whole separate UNO campus too. Like our state schools in the United States are fucking you. You're not a loser for going to your like state school. Um, pretty sure your state school's football program is larger than a lot of school. No, no, that's UNL. This is the Dodge campus. Yeah, there's another one. Um, if you go up. Kyle went, I don't remember. I don't remember the name of it, but yeah. But I'm just saying that like state schools in the United States are fucking huge. Even schools you've never heard of before. Like there's plenty of opportunity. Education is fine. You don't need to, um... yeah, I don't know, man. My university in New Zealand is literally just the size of your field. <laughs> yeah. People are just coping because they went to expensive out-of-state schools. I remember like, if you look at my, if you look at the, um... 
This is good advice, but terrible systemic analysis. A okay. college with the same costs and less revenue from out of state. Students will have to raise tuition on in-state students. The better solution is cost controls at Fed level if they want Fed loans slash grants. Maybe, but I mean, cost controls would also happen naturally as a result of market forces if you're not getting out of state tuition anyway. You could either say, hey, I'm putting artificial cost controls in your school if you want to get student loans, or you say, hey, <laughs> there's not going to be as many out of state students coming to your school, figure out how to control your cost. I mean, effectively, the same thing, it'll get done either way. Actually, I prefer the fewer students coming from out of state because that's going to result in a more natural market equilibrium rather than an artificial price control that's going to cause a lot of external changes that will eventually bring a price anyway, in my very limited analysis. I feel like even the, I remember even the gym in like my, um, in um, at UNO is like larger than probably actually the gym at UNO is probably larger than a lot of European colleges <laughs> like Jesus people complaining about state schools for engineering degrees are fucking retarded losers who thought that they could get C's in their class and work at fucking Boston Dynamics they need to be way more of a focus on relevant extracurriculars maybe yeah I don't know fuck I'm not even able to find this I don't think it's hyper I think it's H-I-P-E-R god damn this US, US schools are just huge Might be HPER. I'm so late to look this up right now. But it seems like a large percentage of students pay sticker price, and those who get scholarships receive very little money. Um, I had looked that up later, but it seems like a large percentage of students pay sticker price. I'm looking at the link that you just sent, and the first thing says percent of freshmen who pay full sticker price. It says 28% is the top number. The total is 25%. Who pays the full sticker price for a college education? Percent of freshmen who pay full price for a public four-year college is 28%. For-profit is 17%. Is this what you linked me? Is this, is this saying the opposite of what you think it says or is it saying the opposite of what I think it says? Click the second stat on scholarships too. What is the second stat on scholarships? Control F scholarships. Be careful with the stats referring to domestic or international students. International students will pay out the ass. Oh. Do you think you can have a good education after high school? My high school was dog shit. I'm 20, by the way. Sure. Every California state college are massive and a lot of financial aid options. Never understood the want for out of state tuition. My privilege, I guess. Based. Um, you know, one of the things I think the Biden administration uh, has not communicated effectively and certainly not solved is um, two things. Does the thing on your screen not say 60% of students don't have scholarships and like 45% pay full price? It seems like the percentage of freshmen who pay full price is 25%. The percentage of undergrad students who pay full price is 38%. So I guess you have a higher chance of paying more per year as you go along, maybe. And the percentage of undergrad students who receive no institutional grants is 61%. Graduate students get little in the way of aid federally, if at all. Things, car prices and house prices. You know, my husband and I, we were fortunate enough to buy our first house. God, what year was it? 2017, 2018? Yeah, you know, we got it for 600000 That cost, my house is nearly doubled in value. Right, in those years. But is it really sense. doubled? You know no, what I mean? it's right. certainly not worth it. It is a mediocre, like my own. What do you mean, but is it really doubled? Listen, in a capitalist economy, the value of something is whatever somebody is willing to pay for it, right? I mean, like, if somebody's willing to buy it for a certain price, then yeah, that's what it's worth. Own realtor, when we bought it, called it a mediocre, forgettable, split level in Dedham, Massachusetts. It's just wow. a normal house. Like, it's great. Yeah. I love owning a house, but it's not. You know, a compound like you've got. Yeah. Um, Shit can be overpriced. Don't be retarded. I mean, it depends on how you look at it. By definition, no, it can't really be overpriced if people are willing to pay money for it, right? Is that house really worth $700,000? Well, I don't know. I got a motherfucker here saying he'll pay $700,000 for it, so I guess it is. That's why, like, generally speaking, if you go and get a, an appraisal for your house to get a loan from the bank, usually the house will appraise at whatever the buyer is offering for it because part of the factor in is the fact that somebody's willing to pay that much for it, right? But just a normal house and it's a million dollars for most people out 20 30 minutes outside of boston that's crazy it's that's worth just, more than this no one well there you go. <laughs> i mean really even with all the we're in the middle well, of nowhere yeah this so you get you really get, nice you get 
Yeah, to be fair though, this is also modular. Yeah. Right? This was just like hodgepodge connect the dots yeah. construction. Yeah. So this the building that we're in for those that are, are wondering, it's, uh, I think it's like 10,000 square feet. Right. To come back to the point though, you know, rent, I, I really do believe that large data um, aggregation is one of the major factors. Appraisals are almost entirely based on nearby sales in the area. Sure, that's a huge factor in housing prices as well as comparable homes in, in nearby areas. True. Rent in the United States has skyrocketed because you've got landlords using large data. There was a really good um, um, uh, uh, report that came out recently on this, talking about how they will figure out how to push the rent higher, 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 higher to the point people will actually pay it. And One thing that people have to stop doing, and I know it's fun to shit on landlords and blah, 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 blah. We gotta stop blaming landlords for rents, okay? The longer we delude ourselves into thinking it's like some evil the whole point mustache is that we twirling. should make it easier and not harder to go to college. A better educated society is a more productive society. There are a lot of middle class families that make good money, so their kids get fucked on 50k tuition. Okay, I don't know what that has to do with literally anything I said. Um, you can go to college without it being an out of state expensive school. I don't, it doesn't have to, it doesn't logically follow you have to go to an out of state expensive school in order to go to college. Um, the longer that we have this weird delusion where we just like blame landlords for the increase in rents, like the longer it's going to take for us to actually figure out the problem, which is just that we need higher density housing. We need more houses in certain areas. Like landlords are going to charge as much as markets can bear. And it's always going to be that way. It's never going to change. That will never, ever, 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 ever change. And it's caused this huge skyrocket in rent all across the United yeah. States. Uh, additionally, I don't know if you follow the account, uh, car dealership guy on Twitter, Really, really interesting person. He does a lot of data um, research into used car prices. Um, I collect and restore old Porsches, so I love oh, this cool. account. And you know, he's talking about how you've got uh, used car dealerships just absolutely folding in Florida right now. The prices have gone through the roof. The inventory is down. Yep. And you've got even wholesale. Oof, sounds like I need to sell my car now. Hell yeah businesses that cannot make any money from this you know the united states is a you have to have a car to get around and just normal people are priced out of it. it's this is not tenable it's 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 a house of cards yeah i mean that maybe that's why michael burry is betting against it because the, the the value of something is what someone's willing to pay for it right and what we have now it's this is not tenable it's 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 what? a house of cards yeah i mean that maybe that's why michael burry is betting against it because the, the, the value of something is what someone's willing to pay for it. Explain San Francisco then. Landlords are refusing to lower rent despite their properties being empty. Every single time I hear a claim about that, almost every single time it's not true. That might be the case for commercial property because of how the loans are structured, which gets into other weird things. But generally, no. I, 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 I mean, I'm going to go look it up later. Maybe you're right. And this is the first time somebody says it is right. But almost every single time there's like, well, what about all the vacant houses in Vancouver? What about all the vacant houses in Toronto? What about all the vacant houses? Like every time I look this up, it's not. That's never the case. These are always the most occupied, least vacant cities in the entire Western Hemisphere. No, Western world. There's not a Western Hemisphere, is there? That's not possible. It would be Northern and Southern Hemisphere, I think. But no, this is, it's never the case, okay? Or it never has been when I've looked at them in the past. Right. And what we have now is people are looking at houses and cars and they're saying, well, if they're selling it for this price, I'm going to sell it for this price. Yeah. And Wait, how can there be a Western hemisphere? How do you even define between East and West? If it's a circle, if it's a sphere. It's just an arbitrary longitude. Huh. And then people don't buy it. Right. And, you know, so interestingly, at the same time, inventory is low. Yeah. I, I went to, we, we went to go look at used car because we have guest transportation. And we go to these dealerships and they're like, we have two vehicles available. I'm like, yeah. What? Yeah. We had to Why go to like okay five different dealerships until we could find something. charge as much as it charges. But the Uber are absurdly low. Why must there be a big financial barrier of entry when being forced to allocate scholarships and grants to achieve a similar cost to a low cost for education? I don't even know what your question means. Why is it okay for the U.S. higher education charges more to charges with you? I, I don't know how I don't know how EU universities fund their shit. I'm not entirely sure. I mean, I'm not I'm not in, I'm not opposed to like making education available for everybody. I'm not opposed. I don't know if you think I am, but thing we ended up buying one, and uh, I'll I'll spare the auto manufacturer, but it was a piece of garbage. We lost a ton of money on because it kept breaking, and we're struggling to find a vehicle. Prices are through the roof. It's crazy, and and we're a company that can afford to do this. I don't uh, and I don't understand how whatever the system is yeah. persists as it is.
You look at things like Uber with how many people you're not making a living doing Uber. That's right. The, the cost of wear and tear on your vehicle, you're, you're probably making a, a couple bucks. I think New York Times said it was like a couple bucks an hour mm-hmm. after you pay for your gas, you pay for your brakes, your tires and all the damage to your car. And then the, the, the intrinsic value of the car is decreasing because you're driving it too much. Right. But there are people who think this is short term cash. Right. So all of that, you know, especially with housing markets. Oh, man, don't get me started on like Airbnbs and everything. I hope this is not doxing anything so you can edit this out if it is. Well, it's live, come, so. If you come to Tim's house, he has a beautiful uh, 1980s Pontiac Fiero in the driveway. So <laughs> That's please, my brother's. <laughs> you got to fix that thing up, man. This, oh, this my brother's, is the my brother's co- got two. I know. It's gorgeous. This is the car in Fast and Furious that went to space. <laughs> so please, oh, wow. if I ever come back here. Like, I will go help your brother in the driveway. We will get that thing running. You can pick me. Oh, they run. That next I, think, I think one is like, he's got two. One's green, one's red. And it's one's, so gorgeous. One's perfectly fi- oh fixed Oh, my up. God. That's a great yeah. car. But, uh, well, let, let's, let's do this. Let's, let's, we agree on a lot. Um, let's talk about where the disagreement comes in and how. Is that true about Uber? I think you can make a living doing Uber, but you, like, the Uber, there's... The problem, I think, this is just for my rough understanding. The problem is when people talk about Uber, Uber is very much like there is a meta to working in. People will talk about Uber and they'll be like, oh, well, what's the average cost of like an Uber ride? And then what's the average cost of wearing to a vehicle? And then like how much, blah, blah, blah. But like, that's not how people that do Uber professionally do it, right? First of all is you always have certain types of cars. Um, like there's like three or four good cars for Ubering, okay? If you're Ubering in like a random vehicle, yep, you're not making money doing Uber. Um, people build a lot of their schedules sometimes around like surge pricing or Ubering in certain areas or certain days of the week um like there's like a whole meta to where if you do uber correctly you you can like you're not a fucking millionaire but you're doing better than like working fast food like you do like okay on um uber but yeah but if you're just like somebody who's like like averaging the cost and like all the things and trying to like oh well look at that blah 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 uber makes no money then yeah but that's not really how people uh, engage with uber yeah The, the, the concern, I suppose, is as tensions escalate in this country yep. in, 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 in scary ways, many people believe it all started with uh, the first big battle of the culture, whatever you want to call it. You mentioned you were a four-star general. Is Gamergate. <laughs> yes. Retired. 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 Yes. Yeah, Gamergate is really interesting, especially the, the, the differing w- w- views on what it was. So we maybe we'll start with that and we'll quickly move forward. I don't know if anyone, if you wanted to chime I've in. I've talked too much. Yeah. Why don't you go, Alex? So, God, Gamergate is not something that you can simply, um, you, you can't simply describe it. It's, it's too, um, God. Um, Amorphous? Vague? I, I, would, I would say so. Nebulous? Uh, well, not, not so much <laughs> vague. It's just there are, there are clashing narratives about what it is. On, on one side, you've got people that were fighting a, a fight for uh, better transparency, better ethics in games journalism and the gaming industry as a whole, uh, less nepotism, so on and so forth. And on the other side, you've got people who say, no, this movement is any kind of ethical concerns they have is a smokescreen. Right. And what they're actually about is harassing women and minorities and trying to get them out of the gaming sphere, uh, anti-progressive, uh, if, if you want to call it that. So I've, I've heard those visions of it. Did you have a different different view? I think, uh, so I think it was very bifurcated. You know, uh, we're friends, I think, mm-hmm. after 10 years. I, I truly believe, you ran the Gamergate subreddit, something I had some issues with, but I truly do believe you personally were in it to, um, because of some concerns about journalism. Uh, I know you yourself went to J school mm-hmm. and this is your focus. I believe you when you say that. I think the outcome of Gamergate is actually a lot wider. It was the start of how we now argue online. And Tim, I want to bring this back to to you and ask you a really honest question. So with my current job, you know, I work with Cenk Uger. Um, I've gotten to know a lot of people in this space. Destiny, I know you're friends with him. He's Um, great. He's a really good person. Um, I am great. And a commonality that I see as I get to know people in this space is all of us carry a certain level of, I I think trauma is too strong a word, but you get screamed at all the time by everyone taking the worst possible interpretation of everything you say. And I think it damages every single public figure out there on the right and the left. I had a conversation with Lauren Southern about this a few days ago. Um, You know, this is just, it's a commonality. And I think at its core, 
Gamergate was the start of this really destructive personal way that we argue online, where if you don't like somebody, you go into their past and you find stuff they've said that you disagree with, and you get a mob together and attack, 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 clip chip it, put anything you've set up that's stupid on subreddit, and you destroy the person. And that's my core message to you, man. Is, the gig worker meta look, in my I city might, puts I, me at 800 to 1K a week after gas and maintenance as much expenses. As anyone. Oh, in cool. a city of 45K people. I've come to the Be conclusion bigger city, bigger money. this is a war and a tactic that does not do anything but lead us into misery. And I think if you're serious about the issues we're talking about, I think the only sane thing for people to do that truly care is to get off Twitter and talk about public policy. <laughs> Just one more thing. If I could go back into time, in time for Gamergate and do something different, I would have deleted my damn account and I would have taken that moment where Intel was putting up $100 million to help women in tech initiatives. And I would have spent all that effort behind the damn scenes trying to get game companies to commit to getting over this hiring bias that they do have in the game industry. That would have been a trillion times more constructive. It would have led to actual changes in the game industry. And now as we find the labor conditions in the game industry are an S show, no matter if you're male, female, whatever, like it would have helped set a standard that would benefit everyone today. I did, I got caught up in something that was, I understand why I did it, but was not productive. And this is what I'm trying to tell people. We've got to focus more on policy and less at screaming at each other. I agree with the screaming at each other, but uh, I, I disagree only somewhat on policy. Uh, I think culture matters more than anything. Politics of it does. Politics being downstream from that. Sure. And so when it comes to issues of the internet, you do have, th there, there are grifters. Grifters exist. They, yeah. they exist to generate attention and they put out things that are fundamentally false or mischaracterizations with the intention of generating traffic, making sure. money. It's not just politics though, right? So I talked about Nikocado Avocado yesterday are you, are you all familiar with I apologize. Nikocado Avocado was a, a, a thin man uh, six years ago who was doing what's called mukbang. Oh, the, the fat video you tweeted. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so there's a video that was tweeted out by an account called Clown World showing a yeah. thin man and woman and then a fat man and woman. For clarification, the woman is not the same person. Right. She's a cyclist. She's fit and exercise and all that stuff. But uh, uh, this is this is a similar phenomenon that people embrace something that generates revenue and traffic, yeah. and then they keep exacerbating it and getting crazier and crazier with it until you have a guy who is morbidly obese riding around on a mobility scooter. Running around on a mobility scooter? What does that mean, Tim? You know, because like if you really think like out of all the the universes out there, right, all the galaxies, we're the only one have Fortnite. It's crazy though because like if you really think like. Out of all the, the universes out there, right, all the galaxies, we're the only one have Fortnite. But right. using that to generate revenue. So after there were serious True. concerns about this dude's well-being, sure. because he started gaining massive amounts of weight, there was like a conversation saying, you need to stop doing this. Right. Instead, he's put out videos of him riding a mobility scooter and smashing his chin and embracing the morbid obesity because it generates, my presumption is, he is playing into the role that gets him traffic, the shock content, his videos went from hundreds of thousands as a thin man eating food to millions now as two more obese. And I gotta tell you, man, mm -hmm. you look at the comments on his latest video, there was that woman, she's, she's grunting and making noises as she stirs noodles. And I'm right. like, this is, not, this is not content where it's like a food taste test. Right. This is not Gordon Ramsay saying like, I really like the salting. This is some kind of uh, like a fetishist content where they want to hear the man and the woman grunt and groan while they eat food, and then they embrace the 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 uh, the vice, I suppose. That's just I, I don't want to just go too much into that, but my point is that happens in every every genre, you name it, every every space, be it gaming, movies, food, yeah. cards, politics, people are constantly looking for the next thing that will get them more traffic to embrace, to push, and to become. Yeah, so two things here. I think uh, something you and I have in common, I hope this is okay to say. Um, I've seen clips Wait, of Wait, why is this thing I have zero tickets? Heavier. I've certainly faced oh, yeah. the same thing. Uh, I put on, when I was running for office, uh, 120 pounds. That was very oh. difficult to take off, right? Um, so I, would, I, I think it's fair. I think there's a way to talk about issues like 
weight gain with love and compassion because I do think it's the best way to live your, your best life. You want to be healthy. That said, if someone's destroying themselves, that is, you know, I'm just libertarian enough to believe uh, that that is a choice they can make. What I am far more worried about is I think there's a huge cottage industry that has exploded since Gamergate on, on all sides. I think it's primarily on the right, but we certainly have actors on the left that do this. They essentially produce uh, political pornography. And what I mean by this is they aim directly at their readers' basest instincts, and they tell them exactly what they want to hear. And it's very often couched in the politics of just destroying. Did you hear about the Baldur's Gate 3 drama? Nope. You know, treating your enemy as inhuman. And I, I think this really deep- Watching on kick rather than YouTube is helpful, yeah? Yeah, it is. The harms our country. I don't think it's uh, unique to any one side, I think the industry exists on the left and the right. And I think people on the right would say, it's the left doing this every day. And people on the left would say, it's a problem of the right. When in reality, as CGP Gray described it, uh, he had a video, I don't know if you've seen it called, this, uh, what is it called, this video will make you angry or mm -hmm. something, where he explains that no one, no one in these spaces are talking to each other. Yeah. They're talking within their group about the other. Right. Which means the only thing you're likely going to hear is the worst thing yep. that your, your, your rival faction has done or your rival tribe. And there's very little conversation about the good things or the merits of, of what they're describing. Don't you think you've played a role in that, though? In, in, in what way? Well, I think this is where Brianna would super ultra benefit from examples. She dramatically would improve her performance if she had examples here. Like, what about when you said or did this? Or what about when you said or did this? It would help her so much. Yeah, you know, Tim, I haven't watched every video you've ever put out, but, uh, you know, I watched a fair sampling of your, your last week. I, I didn't find, I, I could not find one credible example of you saying something nice about the left. I, I think your guests, generally speaking, tilt far to the right. You, know, you have a, a, you're doing an event soon with Donald Trump Jr., yeah. you know? Um, which is, that's fine, that's your right, but I think my message respectfully to you is I, I think you've played a role in this culture war. And oh, I, I think it's no bad question. For our, I think it's very bad for our country. So how do we get Jen Uger to come on the show? Just call him. He, doesn't, he, he said no. Did he, really? Yeah, and not only that, but he, he lied about me, insulted me, and so did Anna. And so we're, we're talking with Anna because she's welcome here. Sure. Uh, Kyle Kalinske uh, is a cool dude, yep. and he's actually, yeah, I've, I've talked to him for uh, quite a bit about this stuff. I'm actually a big fan, and he said, yeah, we'll figure it out. I'm not going to drag uh, anybody for having a show and not canceling their show to come on my show. That's, that's ridiculous. Sure. So for, for Jen Co., uh, Hassan Piker uh, agreed to come on at one point, DM'd me. This was during COVID and said, I just don't think I can travel because there's concerns of COVID. I said, totally fair, and later went on to say that he won't do my show. Yeah. Uh, then uh, uh, Sam Cedar, of course, is the, is the best example of uh, duplicitousness. Yeah. And I think, I think Majority Report is the epitome of what you've described. That is not to say that no one on the right does anything similar, but I, I view uh, the Majority Report as, as a, like po political WWE. There we go. My favorite show, Majority Report. Oh no. Yeah, uh, I think th their, their whole game- uh, Tim is uh, right here for sure. Their, their mission is exactly as you described, to take things out of context, manipulate them, mm -hmm. to, to satiate their, their, their viewers' basest instincts or whatever. So, you know, a couple examples is, I was critical of David Pakman and then apologized for this, because I said, wow, he's got so many videos about Trump. And then I was like, oh, I mean, we do too, right? Sure. We, should, we should reflect on that. We're both talking about high-level politics. I can respect that. I've known David for a decade, or longer than that. Uh, you look at Sam Cedar and his, uh, Majority Report, their videos are all about people. You it's are about both. Dave Rubin, it's about Thanks. me. It's not. It's not about high. It's not about high-level politics or policy. It is the basis of social conflict and 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 complaints. The example that I often give, which exemplifies this, is we put out a song, totally apolitical song, hit the Billboard charts, did really well. Carter actually over here produced it, and when they played it on their show, mm -hmm. they played it in such a way. I, I don't understand. I, I don't oh, agree no. with what you're about to say, but please proceed. Actually. Right. So if yeah, it, I so don't agree. That's if you happens. listen to it, yeah. they they played it in such a way that the quality was dramatically reduced, and then they said it sounded like Nickelback. Two things. Yes, sure. If you played it low quality and say it sounds bad, it sounds bad. But the song's actually masterfully done. 
they say it sounds like Nickelback. Well, that's that's nonsense. The, like, the, the genre of the song we produce is closer to emo sure. and not, not uh, uh, you know, modern rock. They're saying things with the goal of riling up their base to generate revenue. Okay. Um, I'd have to go back and listen, but I, my genres fail me. Um, but I, I don't believe that that Tim Pool song would be considered emo. It's like emo and like a uh, high schoolers might call it emo, but in terms of like emo rock or whatever, I don't. I think it'd be considered kind of like alt rock. I think is. I think you'd squarely say like the Tim Pool song is kind of like alt rocky. If that, not, would you even say that or like? I don't want to say like Nickelback. Maybe like Savage Garden. Fuck! It's been so long since I've listened to any of these groups. No. No, 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 not this. Fuck, there's another group I'm thinking of. Um, I'm trying to think of, would you call this alt-rock? Let me think, let me listen, hold on. It's your heart. Oh, was I thinking of Soundgarden? I don't even remember now. Like I, yeah, I, yeah, I think you would call this like, um, Oh, maybe, sure. Is Soundgarden considered alt-rock? We had this, like, time period in the 2000s where we had a whole bunch of, like, rock bands, but they were kind of, like, would you say, like, grungy or something? We called them all, like, we just called them alt-rock. Yeah, style of alternative rock. Oh, yeah, grungy alt-rock. Oh, my God, I got all the words right. Oh. This would be alt-rock, I think, right? His song is definitely alt-rock. I think. The only reason I say this is because I feel like when I was in high school, if you ever said like, oh, I listen to emo, and people are like, you listen to emo, what do you mean? And you're like, oh, like Taking Back Sunday, like Decade Under the Influence, people are like, that's not emo, that's pop rock. Emo is, and then they would list a whole bunch of like hardcore emo bands that I've never fucking heard of before, and I'd be like, oh, well, you just checked me, I guess. Do you think the majority report actually changed the quality of the songs? I think they probably just played it back to whatever their normal playback is, and the fidelity is just not very high. So... First of all, I have been a majority, like Sam's my dude. I have watched majority. Yeah, okay, so somebody said this. All emo is the subject matter of the song, not really the sound. So I think that's what some people think, but I don't think that's true. Just because a song is like emo doesn't mean it's part of the emo genre of music. I don't think that's even remotely true. Um, yeah. So like somebody might listen to, like I said, somebody might listen to like a, like a Blink-182 song and be like, oh, this is so emo. And it's like, it's like emo in like the adjective sense, like, oh, it's an emo song, but it's not like the genre of emo music, you know? Jordy report since the Bush administration, he kept me sane. I was living in Mississippi during the Bush administration and the only voice saying <clears throat> anything sane about the Iraq war which you agreed with back then, I do believe. The Iraq War? Uh, agreed. Uh, with not supporting the, oh, yeah. like the Bush administration being I'm terrible. Just, I'm still that. opposed to most intervention. Oh, I, I'm so horrified by that. Was Sam Cedar and frankly, Cenk Uger, right? So um, what, what I think you get wrong about Majority Report is they do a you know, roughly a two and a half hour show every single day. The first hour of it, I, you know, it is bringing in experts on inflation and housing no, I, and I, professors. I know that. And, and it I agree is, with that. It is honestly the smartest hour of any show that exists. Like, this is why I subscribe. I'm, I'm very proud to help support the show financially. I agree that the fun half is, you know, it's- the, it's, the, it's the epitome of what you've described as what's choking us out. I don't think out. it always is. I think it's, go, it's sketches with comedians. I think they bring on people like uh, Digby, Heather Pardon, who sh you should definitely invite on the show, uh, Andy Kimmler. I do think they go after Dave Rubin, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm not above enjoying the segments, and I have laughed my ass <clears> off <throat> when they've gone after you. But uh, I just, I think that it is, I, I think it is done in a smart way, and I think uh, it's, you I know, don't think it's political pornography. What we don't do mm -hmm. is, you know, uh, I, very, very few people uh, I, I would insult. Mm -hmm. You know, it typically is reserved for people in Congress sure. and corporations, uh, people who are doing things that are egregious and evil. But like uh, Jenk Uger, you know what I try to do? I try to, uh, I ignore most of his opinions I disagree with on, on, on X slash Twitter because there's no point in me just like quoting him or something. Yeah. But when we agree, I'll quote him. Sure. It's fascinating. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll bring them, uh, uh, we'll, we'll, the Young Turks is a good example of this. Uh, I made a video in agreement with Hassan Piker. Mm -hmm. 
And I went through a whole bunch of issues in which he was right about, uh, he was talking about Mr. Beast. And then Hassan responded insulting me yeah. and, and mocking me. Yeah. Uh, I made a video where I looked over five different studies that talked about something called attract attractiveness privilege. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, conservatives tend to be more attractive than liberals. Mm -hmm. and the reason being, if you grow up attractive, things are easier for you. You tend to then associate the, the success you've had with you being good at something. Right. And so it's often overlooked that if you look like Brad Pitt, you're gonna, more doors doors can open for you. Sure. This results in conservatives being more independent, small government minded, and then it's partly due to attraction, attractiveness. For liberals, they tend to be on the on the lower scale, uh, the, the back end of attraction. This is the multiple studies. It was, it was a Washington Post article that talked about this. And because they faced barriers due to appearance and things like that, they tend to favor more collectivist policies. Mm -hmm. The response from the Young Turks was to call me ugly, post pictures of me, and insult me, even though I was right. And then in the conclusion of their segment, they said, he is right. The studies do say this, but he's ugly right. anyway. Uh, what was the point of that? I, I didn't see the segment, so I can't I, speak I don't do to that. the veracity. I'm not going to insult Anna's looks it, or anything it, like it's that. It's not a way I would behave in my public life. Um, I, I do want to say so two things, and I want to come back to Sam and the Majority Report. What I find really frustrating about Jenks. Uh, I can't individually configure these as ins or outs, right? I've worked with Jenk for five years now. No. Jenk is the most. He is he's literally Skill the issue. best boss I've ever had in the sense that he listens to problems, he raises millions <clears throat> for the Democrats, gets no credit for it whatsoever is always trying to do constructive things for the party in back channel. There's no person I've ever worked with ever in any industry that hires as many strong women to surround himself with and truly listens to them and, and respects them. And just is, even as a friend, is always there if you've had a bad day to listen to them. And it's just mind boggling to me because the, the reputation of Jank is this like, you know, jackass, frankly. And it's just not the guy I work with at all. And, you know, so I think that, I think that you're wrong about Cenk. And I think if you look directionally at the totality of his work, I think you would see he's someone that is truly trying to build What things. am I wrong about, though? I think you think he's just someone who's trying to go after you individually. Right? No, I think he's, yeah. he's uh, as you described, the yeah. culture war. Somebody who is... Saying what needs to be oh. said because it generates revenue. Oh, and man. I'll give you another example. Uh, something called the Alternative Influencer Report came out. Uh oh. Uh, this was back in, I think, like 2018. It was essentially a fictitious document that w had a bunch of nodes, like the, you know, the conspiracy theory things where people tie ribbons to each other. Yeah. In this, for instance, they said that uh, Chris Raygun, a game content creator, yeah. uh, today rather apolitical, ha was directly linked to Richard Spencer. Okay. They drew a line directly between a guy who talks about video games and quite literally the most prominent white nationalist at the time. Right smack dab in the middle of it was me, connected to everybody. Mm -hmm. And they connected me to people I'd never met before. They connected me to people like Stephen Molyneux I'd never even spoken a word to or spoken about. And so when this report comes out, it instantly gets picked up by a whole bunch of mainstream corporate publications. It's it, it, absurdly false in, sure. in its premise. The Young Turks produced a segment where they used an image with my name right in the middle about the influencer network of the far right or whatever, me actually knowing Anna and Jenk, having been on their show several times, DMing with them. The last time I saw Jenk Uger, uh, he walked up to me, we shook hands, I said, How, how's it been? How, how's, it, how's it been going? Everything good? I'm at Politicon, and I see Jenk standing in the hallway. And I walk up, I was like, hey, how's it going, man? And he's like, hey. And I was like, I, I sent you a message about that video you produced where you put, you, know, you put me in this thing about like Richard Spencer or whatever. And I was like, I just, you never responded. So what does Jenk do? Starts screaming in my face at the top of his lungs. Okay. It's filmed by multiple film crews. And I just went, why are you yelling at me? And then he started screaming about Donald Trump and about the right. And I can't remember exactly what was said. And then he stormed off, went in a room where I was told I wasn't allowed to go in. Wow. Damn. And that was the last physical interaction I've had with the man. And since then, we've only ever invited the likes of all of these uh, left, prominent left personalities. They won't come on the show. Sure. They don't want to engage in uh, these conversations, but they absolutely love to take things I've said out of context or just make videos insulting sure. me. Sure. So I'm not going to speak for anybody on the right, but I can tell you, I agree with you about the culture war. And I see you've got people like Ben Shapiro who uh, you can say he's wrong for days, mm -hmm. 
but he doesn't do this these these things either. Yeah. He he said he sat down with Anna and she agreed to sit down with him. It was he, a great interview. And he tries to have these conversations. The Young Turks don't do it. Hassan Piker won't do it. Well, you know, Young Turks is not the same as Hassan. He's well, Sam, his own man. Sam Sam Cedar yeah. sets us up for drama and, and W I think you're completely wrong about that. I published I the DMs. I read it. Oh, and, I'm and embarrassed he, and, to say how many and, times I've read it. And he yeah. agreed to come on the show. Yeah. He agreed to us covering travel and accommodations. Y'all he gave had us a date. A breakdown in communication, Tim. Sure, I, sure. I swear to so, God. Hold on, hold on. So then he made a bunch of videos about it. Yeah. Lying. Yeah. And then we just moved, carried on and said nothing. Tim, is there a Bible around here? I will put my hand on the Bible and swear to Christ Almighty that I have read those DMs at least 10 times. Mm -hmm. And it is my honest interpretation. Y'all. He's not lying at all. He is open, he is honest, and he's reached out. Hold then, on, hold then on. And why did he, he make rage based he content with it? out to you <clears throat> a thousand times after that is willing to come on your show. Why make ra multiple rage bait videos? I'm, I'm, I'm not going to sure. entertain that. If, okay. if when Hassan told me publicly on Twitter he would come on the show, and then the uh, same exact tweet that I put out saying we try to get people on the left to come on the show and talk to us, Hassan said, I'm game or something to that effect. I DM'd him. He said, let's figure it out. He then responded and said, I'm actually concerned about traveling right now due to COVID. And I Wait, this is for some right now. Can I catch a break, brother, man? Back to Angie, this is a force of lung. This is it, it's a force of lung. But this is a force of and I said, yeah. no worries, man. I really yeah. appreciate you reaching out. Yeah. Sam decided to turn it into yeah. rage bait content and persist in his endeavor. Shouldn't to this be flowing to in? If I can be here today and be sitting down with one of the Gamergate mods, someone, you know, like, I know you did not do this, but the Gamergate movement sent me quite a lot of death threats, rape threats, made my life terrible, hacked my bank account, uh, you know, really, really, really disrupted my life. If I can let that go and there was a washington post article about me trying to forgive gamer gators and move forward like maybe you should like you're clearly I, i'm not saying you're wrong to be upset about these things and i i truly understand i've been the target of those <clears throat> kinds of shows as well but you know the the truth is we've got to find a way to live together in this country and move forward so i think so I, I genuinely think maybe have your producer lisa she's a lovely person talk to sam set some ground rules leave personal stuff out of it just just talk to him like an adult let that go i have let it's, they it's, sent it's, me letters dude talking about cutting my skin off my body and boiling it and feeding it to and me and we've been swatted 15 times we had the bomb yeah, squad sent out horrible. here horrible it's yep. terrible you we are public figures right yep. and if we can't move forward i just don't know where we are as a country. well we can move forward right so despite the things say like anna said about me or uh I, actually to be fair Jesus, i'm not why do these I, I, so I think much? it may have been anna and um nando villa which is really funny because I, I know nando as well and i have no beef with them and i'm just confused as to why they're making a video insulting me because i was reading a washington post article that was deemed true by them uh jenk screamed in my face in in, in a shocking way that i was I was confused. I had the BBC come to me and said, what just happened? And they, they, they interviewed me about it. And I was like, I have no idea. But the thing with Sam Cedar, yeah. if you look at like the, the Ethan Klein, uh, Stephen Crowder mm -hmm. bit, yeah. it's just, it's a clown show. It's not. And, and you can, you, I, I understand that they talk policy and they talk about these things, but you can't come in here and be like, the fact that people are doing these things and making a spectacle and, uh, you know, having each other at their throats, we can't do things like that. It's like, well, Sam Cedar is the epitome of that. I, you can, I you can am... criticize a lot of people on the right who do similar things, but Sam is the, it's, it's, it's in, it masquerades as fact content, which it has a decent amount of, that's fine, but it is WWE. It is, you know, when they, when, when, when they come in here, they intentionally, look at Emma, right? What did she say when she came in here? Why do you think your show influenced and influences neo-Nazis to get mass, mass murders or something like that? Mm -hmm. Which is an outright fabrication sure. and a manipulation. And then and you she called was told, her a pedophile after the show. Well, uh, <laughs> that's in response to her saying that there should be books explaining scat and oh. sexual activities to minors. When we discussed a teacher who was actually uh, had the police called on her sure. because she was talking to 10 year olds about how to use Grindr. And Emma said that she supports that. I said, the only assumption we can make if someone wants children to learn how to use grinder is that they are they are, they have proclivities towards children. Okay. Okay. 
I hear you, man. I, I genuinely hear you. What I think I would like to propose is, you know, I can't speak for Jenk, but I bet, I, I think there's a good chance if you talk to him, he would consider coming on the show today. He, he, look, if he's busy and he hosts his own show, I'm not yeah. gonna, I'm not gonna, that, that, that's why I don't go on Twitter. I'm like, ah, oh, Jenk's avoiding, no, it's ridiculous. Like the dude's probably busier than I am. So uh, who and are you willing to put like past grievances aside? Like, oh, quite agree. literally. Yeah. Well, there, I, I have so no. Not I have no. Sam, not Jane. The checks are welcome on the show anytime. Okay. We, we legitimate political reason. Well, uh, let me slow down. There's no le legitimate factual reason to interview a con artist and crackhead who's making these absurd claims. I'm not a fan of this. I wasn't a fan of it when they did it to Brett Kavanaugh. I'm not a fan of it now. That being said, I applaud Tucker Carlson for doing it. You know why? Welcome to the tit for tat world of politics. So to clarify, there's a political reason to do this, to attack the Democrats, I guess, to make them look like degenerates, to strike at the credibility of the Obamas, maybe to prevent Michelle Obama from gaining traction or to create just some negative press around the Obamas. Fine, whatever. Simply put, the Democrats, the left and the media in this country entertained the most psychotic lies you could imagine about Brett Kavanaugh. Tucker Carlson is simply engaging in the exact same behavior. Legitimate political reason. Well, uh, uh, let me slow down. There's no le legitimate factual reason to interview. Okay. You invite him incessantly. We, okay. I DM him. I'm like, bro, we want you on the show. So it's just the Especially, majority report? And then it's not, it's not personal. It's, it's more like, uh, you know, if, 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 if I'm engaging. Tim Pool is the Vosh of the right, you think? If I'm going to play basketball sure. and someone asks me to come and play basketball, I am not going to go play on the Washington Generals or the Harlem Globetrotters. That's not actually playing the game. Now, if you want to put on a show where the Generals slip fumble and then there's like it's entertaining for people as the guy spins the ball on his finger. Sure. That's what people are into. They're allowed to be into it. Sure. That, the majority report is more like WWE. The Young Turks is it's more. It's not. It is the smartest hour on I... in, in the leftist universe. It Sam, is. Sam has, you know, look. This is, it's not even my personal opinion. Sure. Everyone in the industry, including Sam, knows he's blacklisted for this. Who? Who is blacklisted? Sa Sam Cedar is blacklisted. No, who in the right-wing ecosphere has... Right-wing? No, I'm yeah. talking about mainstream. I'm talking about who, corporate who platforms. Who specifically? Because you've made this allegation multiple times. I would like to know who. So I am, I'm not going to bring up Sam's personal beefs with other shows, but Sam has talked about it on his own show. Sure. He knows. And it is not my place to come say, hey, this person has explicitly said these things for a variety of reasons. I am not going to get involved in the WWE of Sam Cedar. I'm going to explain my position, but okay. by all means, by all means, when Emma was on the show, she outright admitted they know exactly what I'm talking about. I didn't get that impression, but okay. She said, yes. Yeah. I said, I asked her, you know that Sam's blacklisted from various shows, and, and she said, of course, and it's because they're scared to debate Sam or whatever her opinion was. Right. And that's fine. You can believe he's, he's, he's blacklisted for whatever reason, but I can tell you explicitly some of the biggest uh, uh, podcasts in, in, in the political space have outright said that the dude, uh, Sam, will have, like, I, I'll, I'll use this example as the perfect example. When Emma, in the middle of conversation, abruptly said, why do you think your show inspired a neo-Nazi mass shooter? Mm -hmm. That thing right there is why people be like, scratch this guy's name off the books. He's not welcome on this show. Okay. Because that was what she did was a lie intended to generate shock content WWE garbage. As as a matter, so I don't agree with her assessment. To be clear, but the factual oh, basement of what she was talking about is there was a mass shooter. As I oh no, careful! Here, and they were found to be a really big fan of your no, show. That's a lie. That is not true. That is not true. Okay. That's and not, so why bring that really up without true. doing any? Re it's shock WWE content. Okay. But I'll tell you exactly what it was. Uh, the guy in Texas had four screenshots of one episode where yeah. one guest had said a specific thing. The screenshot in question was quoting a specific thing said by sure. one time a guest. Sure. To then come out and say that your show did this thing when and this we'll individual the simply posted four screenshots of one guy is exactly the issue with the majority report. The mm -hmm. disingenuous 
WWE not, style shotgun. It's so good. It's such a good show, man. I, I feel like if you're someone who watches, say, I'll give you another example, uh, and I'll, I'll throw some uh, critique at David Pakman. Uh-oh. Uh oh. Chuck Todd had, uh, um, who did he have on? Uh, uh, Ted Cruz. Mm hmm. And this is a couple years ago. He asked Ted Cruz, do you think Ukraine interfered in the U.S. elections? And Ted Cruz's response was, Politico and the New York Times reported that. A producer then starts laughing and can be heard being picked up in the audio on NBC. David Pakman gleefully just laughs along with it. Mm -hmm. the, that right there, if you are someone who watches that content uncritically, you are grossly misinformed. And if you're watching things like that- Do I like seem that, like someone grossly misinformed? Uh, you may be misinformed in certain areas, but right. I'm, I'm, not, I'm yeah. not, based on our conversation, I'm not here to accuse you of, of yeah. knowing or not knowing. I'm saying, if you're watching the majority report and uh, uh, they run a segment where they're being disingenuous. Sure. I don't watch the majority report. But an example being Emma, they did a segment about her saying, why did your show inspire this person? Right. Well, that's lying to okay. people and okay. manipulating the space and if, if you're trying to convince people that okay. because one crazy person posted four screenshots that my show had anything to do with that, these are the people who are making the culture war worse and fanning the flames of violence. I don't think that's true. I, I've never heard majority reports say anything. No, it's stochastic they, terrorism. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Let me have my say. This is important and your listeners deserve a response to this. I've never heard the majority report say anything that I thought would be like supporting violence. No, it's now, stochastic now, terrorism. I have seen your show like promote some things like you yourself have said civil war, civil war, civil war. There's a civil war coming. We're in the middle of a civil war. So I think if there's anyone in this situation <clears throat> that is advocating violence and stochastic terrorism, I think respectfully, you would be the party, I think, would have done that much more than majority. So were. me, uh, for instance, quoting a news article is, is inciting violence, you're saying. And saying civil war over you, and over again? This is my issue with, um, and, and this is, I didn't come here today to adjudicate the beef between you and Sam. This is what I wanted to say to you, Tim. I understand that you are going to vote for Donald Trump in 2024. That you're right. I wholly support that. I respect you for it, right? You've thought your way into the position. That's democracy. We've got to work our butts off and beat you at the ballot box. I don't worry about losing an election to your audience as much as I worry about you convincing your audience that the Justice Department is crooked and the FBI is crooked and the local police department is crooked and the elections are crooked and that there's no point to believing in American democracy. Or Why have I ever said any of those things? I think so you got to slow I down think, there. I you think made, directionally you... speaking, this so is the message of your show. So let's go, let's yeah, go back to say sure. like, elections are crooked. Yeah. Uh, that's probably a technicality in which I've said elections. It's a technicality. Yeah, sure. Let's okay. explain. Elections have never been this. Two guys stand up, say, I have position A, I have position B, and then everyone smiles and shakes hands. Sure. El elections have always been dirty politics, ads that take quotes out of context. But I've never said that the elections are unwinnable or that there's no point. In fact, I said quite the opposite. Since Donald Trump lost to Joe Biden, I have even argued to Steve Bannon's face. He is wrong about how Donald Trump lost. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump lost because people voted against him. And there are people who think Joe Biden could not have gotten those votes. And I'm like, he didn't get those votes. Donald Trump they were anti-Donald Trump votes. Sure. Okay. Th th this is what everything the media had said up, un up until the 2020 election is that the, the famous article, I think it was Atlantic, stay alive, Joe Biden, we just need your corporeal form. Okay, it so was, just let's do this one at a time. Your yeah. audience deserves this. So it's your statement today. You believe Joe Biden won 2020? Fair, like it was a free and fair election. You were on record saying that? There's a, there's a lot to break down in what you mean by free and fair, <laughs> oh but I believe God. that Joe Biden got more votes than Donald Trump. Direction. Joe Biden got more votes than Donald Trump, and then there's the nuance of policy procedure and what people would argue is free and fair is, is, that, is what that question. What's not a question is, I do not believe China mass printed votes or that Dominion was flipping things right. or any of that stuff. What matters is that through a, through a uh, uh, overwhelmingly legal strategy and process right. democrats ran a an election strategy which resulted in joe biden beating donald trump i think something you're really skilled at doing is you find these edge cases that that prove a point you want to have i think directionally most reasonable people would look at the phone call that he had i don't think you can say edge cases when you're talking about the impeachment the first impeachment of the ex-president of the united states 
Alexander Vindman came forward and talked about and understand that's an under. Go back effect. more? How does he just say, how does it, how is it only interesting the millisecond I step away from the computer? Okay. The issue being when uh, Florida, for instance, passed the uh, parental rights and education bill, which was fairly broad, the response from the Democratic Party and the media was don't say gay, which was a complete misinterpretation of what the bill actually was yeah. for political reasons. Yeah. This is the kind of thing that is leading people to say, like, we are on the verge, among uh, many other things. There's okay. grains of sand that ultimately make a heap. But these are things that are leading to the bifurcation of this country. So I know this sounds idealistic, Tim, but this is something Jenk and I talk about a lot. That I think that this is something that's meant to divide us. And I want to be really clear. I, have a I don't think you can just, I think you have to address the merit of what he's saying. You can't just say, like, oh, you're just trying to divide us. Like, it's a pretty important, like, the grounds of what we're talking about are, are pretty important. Different assessment of LGBT rights than I think you do. You skipped it? Wait, I went back like 10 minutes. I'm pretty sure we're back at where I was as soon as I stepped away. But at the same time, in my experience, like when I ran for office, I counted it one time. It was tens, tens of thousands. 20, we, yeah. 30,000. Pop something, James, your audience's lives. And just one more thing. I think if your audience was being real and they were in the room today, I think they would tell me they care a lot more about how they're going to pay their rent than that damn book. Well, of course. Yeah. Most people. So why but, do we not talk about that as much? But most, uh, but, but I think that is the issue. I think the issue is people looked at 2019 and the, the strong economic numbers mm -hmm. and then the Democratic Party's underhanded manipulations to try and stop Trump. And that is ripping this country. I don't agree it was underhanded. Well, so like uh, the first impeachment we now know was a, 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 was a hoax, right? Ukraine gate. It was a hoax. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, I don't share that assessment. But it's only because you don't know. Right, you didn't you didn't read the I sworn. I that pretty closely. Have you read the sworn affidavits out of Ukraine? Have you read the New York Times report on what Ukraine was engaged in during the 2016 election? Do you know who Viktor Shokin is? Do I you, think do you know about I've, I listened to the hearings and I cannot give you direct quotes of everything that happened back my point. then. Hold on, hold on. But I remember hearing the the phone call. Who is the NSA guy that came in? Uh, the guy that came in, uh, Alexander Vindman, mm -hmm. hearing his testimony. I think that what Trump did was very clearly a shakedown. What did Trump do? He tried to influence the foreign policy of the United States to dig up dirt on his political opponent. Why? Is, what's wrong with that? I don't even know if I would be ready for a question like that. What's wrong with using the office of the presidency to navigate the entire foreign policy arm of the United States of America to orient it towards digging up dirt on political opponents? It is obviously wrong because okay, you so cannot- should, No, 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 you, gotta, you can't say it's obvious. You, can't, you have to say it. If he's gonna ask the question, you have to actually answer it, right? Should Joe the, Biden be impeached can't... for telling A.G. Merrick Garland to go after Trump? What was, wait, for telling A.G. Merrick Garland to go after Trump? Hold on, I'm sorry. Can somebody provide me the quote? What is he even pretending to refer to there? Pretty sure that, I'm pretty sure that every time Biden has been asked about the DOJ, I think he says over and over again, I don't know what they do. I have no whatever. I don't do anything. No idea. Not even sure what they're going on there. I didn't even know these indictments were coming out. I found out on the media. I had no idea. I'm pretty sure I've heard him say over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Destiny, click. Thegatewaypundit.com. Oh boy. Joe Biden pressured Merrick Garland to indict President Trump, his main political rival who's beating the polls. On Tuesday, President Trump was indicted again by the Biden DOJ, the day after Hunter Biden's best friend and business associate, Devin Archer, testified that the Joe Biden that the Joe Biden was included on 20 calls when his son was sitting with foreign policy. Archer also testified that Joe Biden met with Russia's Yelena Baterina, who invested $40 million in Hunter Biden's real estate. So whatever next, President Trump was indicted by special counsel. Now we know who's behind. Okay, this is nothing. Wait, that was a troll. This is a troll post, right? Who linked this in chat? <laughs> Mr. Comet. Okay, I don't, I, I, I'm so curious what quote Trump is like, it's right below that. Well, the press acknowledged its previous reporting about this pressure campaign. 
In the past, Mr. Biden privately told his close circles of advisors that Mr. Trump was a threat to democracy and should be prosecuted for his role in the events of January 6, according to two people familiar with the comment. He also commented that he wanted Attorney General Merrick B. Garland to stop acting like a ponderous judge and take decisive action. This is, first of all, even if we assume this quote is true, this is not him pressuring the DOJ at all. In June 2022, that House Democrats are upping the pressure on Merrick Garland to prosecute. House Democrats are not Joe Biden. CNN reported that the Democrats are increasingly aware that this is not, okay, well the press report that Joe Biden, okay, this is so, this is not substantiated anywhere, but okay. Wrong with that. It is I'm just saying that's where his claim is coming. Okay, so should, should Joe Biden be impeached for telling A.G. Merrick Garland to go? She should ask him. Show me where he told Merrick Garland that. I want to see that. She should have asked him that. That's an insane claim to make. Dr. Trump? I don't. New York Times reported mm -hmm. Joe Biden went to Merrick Garland and instructed him to go after Trump. New York Times. New York Times. Joe Biden instructed Merrick Garland prosecute Trump. Garland faces growing pressure as January 6th investigation widens. The inquiry is a test for President Biden and Attorney General Garland, who both came to office promising to restore the Justice Department's independence. Mr. Biden confided to his inner circle that he believed former President Donald J. Trump was a threat to democracy and should be prosecuted, according to people familiar with his comments. While the president has never, and while the president has never communicated his frustrations directly to Mr. Garland, he has said privately that he wanted Mr. Garland to act less like a ponderous judge and more like a prosecutor who is willing to take decisive action over the events of January 6th. This is not pressuring a judge. And you're allowed to have a private opinion about it. That's fine. There's not that's not illegal, and that's not pressuring a judge. But okay. I think or the, I'm, no, I shouldn't say judge, attorney general. That there is a very big difference in someone giving the Justice Department a free hand to pursue illegalities where they may exist and someone doing a shakedown. Does Donald threatening Trump? Threatening things that affect our geostability okay. and the Does entire world and the national security policy let's, let's, of the United States. Do you think Donald Trump had the authority to withhold congressionally approved loan guarantees to Ukraine unless they took the political action he wanted? I think I don't believe he had the authority to do that because I don't think he was practicing U.S. foreign policy at the time. I'm pretty sure Joe Biden, I think that our uh, aid was actually contingent on Ukraine following through on certain measures. And the United States and the rest of Europe wanted those things to be done. It's a totally different scenario. I wonder if we should have the... If I should try to do this Burisma dance. Or not, this isn't even the Burisma dance. The first impeachment dance with... Do you, do you think I, Donald Trump I, had the authority to do that? I would need to sit down and look at that particular instance. But so my you don't recollection know. of the first impeachment was it was very well founded. Okay, so the, the issue at question. Like it, it's it's so interesting to describe it as the authority. Like technically, President Biden has the authority to pressure the Attorney General to press charges. I think technically Biden has the authority to do that. He technically has the authority to just pressure somebody, but he probably shouldn't. Right? Does Biden have the, or does the President of the United States have the authority to unilaterally withhold aid that was already promised by Congress? I don't even know the answer to that. But even if I grant him that and say that the answer is yes, it's probably still improper. You can do things you have the authority to do that are still improper, right? Question is, and, and well, most, I mean, if you don't people, know about it, I don't. Most I, people looked at this when it happened and reached the same assessment that I did. I think saying most people is probably one, an appeal to authority, but doesn't apply when the country is split in half, right? With 75 million people voted for Donald Trump, clearly they didn't agree with what you're saying. I think something you're really skilled at doing is oh, you find God. these edge cases oh, that, yeah, she's that prove this. a point you want to have. I think directionally, most reasonable people would look at the phone call that he had, that Alexander Vindman came forward and talked about, and understand that's an underhanded thing to do. Right. So. It's really easy to use, this is, this is a beautiful trick of the corporate press, um, and I'll criticize a right-wing publication for, for using this technique. The CDC recently came out, said with the B2, I think it was the B286 uh, variant, mm -hmm. those who have immunity, either because of previous COVID infection or the COVID vaccine, are more susceptible to this virus. Mm -hmm. Leading report, I think it's called, tweeted, the CDC says if you've been vaccinated, you're more likely to catch the new variant, which sure. is cutting out a large portion of the context. Mm -hmm. So it's masterfully done. I, I think it was masterfully done how the Democrats took a legitimate national security issue for which Trump did what he was supposed to do and turned it into Trump did something wrong. 
But of course, you'd hold that position if you don't actually know the circumstances around it. Tim, I, if the I, only thing I would you ask know, you to talk to me with respect. I did follow this. Very but no, 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 yeah. no, no. It's not a question of respect that you don't know this. It's not. It's not a question of being disrespectful or I, respectful. I don't if, focus on the same edge cases. It's not an edge case. It's the impeachment of the president. Yeah, you can't this really is, call this, this an the edge first case. Impeachment it's a pretty of, of Donald Trump and why it was done and who did it. So there's there's a, there's a whole lot to this. For instance, uh, Joe Biden. We now know was involved with Hunter Biden's business dealings. Of course, no, at the time they said it wasn't true. No, we don't know that. We now know, know that, that he used an alias, was it Robert L. Peters or Robert uh, Ware, to provide government information to uh, to Hunter Biden and to Devin Archer as they were engaged in foreign business dealings. By all means, you can think that's fine. I'm not. That's not the issue at question. No, it's not that I think it's the, fine. It's that the assessment I reach is, look, if the Justice Department wants to investigate Hunter Biden and, and look at the stuff with Joe Biden, I have zero issue with that. The Donald Trump was the Justice the Department. The difference in our our assessment here is I have no objection to the rule of law in the Justice Department looking into politicians that do things that are wrong. I think we need a million times more of it. I think you and I would probably agree. Like um, there was a bill before uh, the House when Nancy Pelosi was in charge looking at insider trading by Congress. Agreed. Of course that should be passed. So let of me ask course, you. Of course, and they don't do that. I want to see much more right, right, right. We, we agree but sure. let, let, let's get to the Just core of the impeachment thing about this, well so we, because we, i think that when you're a public figure you're held to higher standards mm -hmm. of ethics and behavior you know i think we're far too willing to let our own side off the hook and respectfully so, i think you're doing that with Donald should Trump. joe biden be impeached for threatening the president of ukraine with withholding congressionally approved loan guarantees unless they fired the prosecutor who was investigating barisma it wasn't because he was investigating barisma number one number two that investigator said number three joe biden was not acting out of his personal interest he was acting in the interest of more, most importantly the united states government of which it was the vice president of representing but two also the entirety of europe the United States government in Europe was not asking Donald Trump to unilaterally withhold aid to investigate Hunter Biden. It is such an unbelievably different circumstance. I don't, I've never read anything that that's true. Okay, yes, Joe Biden is on camera sitting with the Council of Foreign Relations and he said, I, I went to Ukraine and I spoke mm -hmm. with the president mm -hmm. and he said, unless you fire the prosecutor, you're not getting the billion dollars. Are you familiar with this? I'm not. Okay. We'll have to pull that video up. You see, uh, this is the challenge. Right now, we have, we, not only have we had a sworn affidavit, uh, we have a sworn affidavit from Victor Shokin. We have additional uh, uh, statements from him. Oh, man, pulling up this stuff on the fly. Uh, let's see. It, it is rather remarkable uh, that you're unfamiliar with this. Probably better off pulling it up on Twitter, to be completely honest. Oh, yeah. I, I'd prefer to see a reputable news source. I'll just, I'll get you the, the CFR's actual video of it. Oh, you just jump in here in old Twitter, and then, uh, that, that it's, it's, so here's the latest from Victor Shokin, but, uh, here's, uh, here's just the video of the CFR, uh, Hold on, why is this Twitter account? Can we go back? I meme, therefore I am. Okay. Is a, is a CFR video of Joe Biden not, not good enough for you, though? Convincing that, that we should be providing for loan guarantees. And I went over, I guess... Can you start you over, Tim, so I can really pay attention? I remember going over convincing our team, our <clears throat> others, to convincing that, that we should be providing for loan guarantees. And I went over, I guess, the... 12th, 13th time to Kiev, and uh, and I was going supposed to announce that there was another billion dollar loan guarantee, and I had gotten a commitment from Poroshenko and from uh, Yatsenyuk that they would take action against the state prosecutor, and they didn't. So they said they had they were walking out to the press conference, said, "No, nah, I said I'm not going to, or we're not going to give you the billion dollars." Isn't this they about said, the corruption? You have no authority. You're not the president. The president said, "I said call him." <laughs> Why do you think Biden felt comfortable saying that in a room full of people that then all laughed and this wasn't a big deal until later when Donald Trump did it for his own personal interests? Like, it's such a stupid comparison. It's such a wildly stupid comparison. <laughs> I said, I'm telling you, you're not getting a billion dollars. I said, you're not getting a billion. I'm going to be leaving here. And I think it was, what, six hours? I looked, I said, I'm leaving in six hours. If the prosecutor's not fired, you're not getting the money. 
Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> got fired. And they put in place someone who was solid at the time. Well, I so remember the, going the assumption I'm going to make here, and this is mm -hmm. in good faith, the assumption I'm going to make here is there were issues with corrupt prosecutors in Ukraine. False. Right? As I understand it, that is what was going on there, and I would strongly suspect that's what Biden is talking about, because there were issues getting people the money. I mean, sure, when someone mugged someone, they said, I didn't mug him, I was just asking for the money. The actual, what, the evidence that we have currently is that Joe Biden was involved with, with Hunter Biden. Hunter Biden was on the board of Burisma. Hunter Biden was receiving $83,000 per month. With his partner's uh, partnership uh, with, with Devin Archer, they were involved in a slew of, of business dealings for which Joe Biden claimed he wasn't involved, but we now know was using an alias to provide government information. The prosecutor, Viktor Shokin, in Ukraine had mm -hmm. about a dozen plus, according to Matt Taibbi, open investigations into the corruption of Mykola Zlachevsky. Mm -hmm. It is now known that- But all of those investigations were dead. That was the whole point. That was one of the reasons why he had so much why there was so much pressure against Shogun, but uh, whatever. Uh, I feel like, yeah. Hunter Biden was asked to make a call to DC to help solve this problem, for which a few days later, Joe Biden flew to Ukraine and without the authority to do so, because the vice president does not have authority to withhold congressionally approved loan guarantees, threatened the president that he would withhold it unless they fired the prosecutor because in, after the fact they say this, we put in someone good. Now, the problem with this story is- How do you- uh, no let's, intention, let's, let's 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 right. let's get there. Mykola Zlachevsky, the founder of Burisma, had fled the country during these investigations. We know that Hunter Biden was asked specifically to call D.C. to deal with the prosecutor investigating Burisma. After Joe Biden went and got the prosecutor fired, they put in someone who he said was solid. And then the corrupt Zlachevsky returns to Ukraine. When Donald Trump began looking back into what this was about, Zlachevsky flees the country again. So here we have Evidence, 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 for which you've never heard. But the fact remains, Joe- None of this is evidence for anything. It's not evidence. All of it is like, well, this guy talked to a guy and I think it might be um, relating to this. Like, there, like, where's your smoking gun for any of this, for a single part of this? Like, there's nothing. Biden was engaging in private business dealings. If you want to argue he, sh he, he it's fine he does because they all influence pedal, make arguments about Ivanka it's Trump. Not my and, argument. And, and, it's and, not my I'm argument. Saying, but I'm not saying you, I'm the rhetorical you. Sure. That uh, Ivanka was doing trade deals or copyright stuff with China, fine. But for the vice president to fly out a few days after mm -hmm. Hunter Biden contacts DC with a problem of a quote unquote prosecutor investigating or a prosecutor quote unquote investigating Burisma, and he then threatens a quid pro quo against the country, which he has no authority to do. And then when Donald Trump says, what's this all about? They say, Trump's the one who did something wrong. Okay, so two things here. I hear what you're saying. I think you're making a conclusion where there's not evidence you can tell what's in Joe Biden's mind there. But if you're talking about throwing Hunter Biden to the wolves of the Justice Department, I have no issue with that. My problem here, Tim, is I think it's about proportionality, right? It, it's like, I think directionally, if you look at the integrity of the State Department and the processes under Joe Biden, I think directionally, of course you can find things that you can criticize, but I think it has shown infinitely more integrity than you can find under the Trump administration. I mean, an argument, outside, we're talking, if we're talking about specifically about the impeachment, then feel free to say everything you want to say. You want to turn the monitor over? Look. You can deny. I just is, want to say this is a very slope side because you can put up any clip and demand. Well, yeah, but I mean, to it and there's not. Hunter Biden here. called D.C. to get Ukraine prosecutor fired for Burisma, his ex business According partner. According to the Free Beacon, and okay. the Free Beacon is NewsGuard certified eighty <laughs> percent. <laughs> wow, fuck me, NewsGuard certified. Okay. Is NewsGuard in, is, is is NewsGuard not good enough for you? I I don't know what NewsGuard is. I typically get my news from. New York Times, Washington Post, LA Times. So, right, and if the uh, uh, if Devin Archer has testified that this is the case, you can fine say the lying, the media's fake news. I'll, I'll take that, fine, sure, whatever. But at a certain point- How many times do I have to say if Hunter Biden effed up? 
No, it's Joe Biden. Yeah. It's Joe Biden. And when Donald you Trump actually Hunter Biden called, called DC to Ukraine, and then four days Joe later, Biden Joe Biden flew to him. Ukraine to get the prosecutor fired. It How many? I somebody. I think if you listen, if you're a leftist or if you're a person, you're going to go on Tim Pool's show. I think you have to do like a whole bunch of research because I'm starting to notice this now. Tim Pool brings up this like Shokin, Joe Biden, Hunter Biden stuff like every single time. I think it's probably worth. I think it's probably worth like doing a deep dive into this and have all the facts on it because he's probably going to bring it up, right? If you're going to be that obtuse, you're not here in good faith. No, I just... Four, four, four days after Hunter calls and says, the prosecutor's shaking us down, Joe Biden goes and threatens to withhold, illegally, I might add, congressionally approved loan guarantees. And when we have a president, you can call Donald Trump all the names in the book. You can call him disgusting, lewd, lascivious, and corrupt. But if he calls and says, what's going on with this Joe Biden thing? And they say, quick, impeach Donald Trump. I'm sorry, I don't think Trump is the corrupt one in that, in, in that story. Think... What an unbelievable summary. I think it's just conspiracy thinking, man. This is, it, it, it's a conspiracy that Hunter Biden called DC I to get the prosecutor fired, have... and then Joe Biden flew to Ukraine to get the prosecutor so, fired. That, those are facts. That's a, those are facts. Right, We've right, had but, a great conversation. Those are facts. Almost two hours. We've turned down the temperature. I hear what you're saying. I will look into this, and I will happily call into your show, or do whatever you want to do. If you want to have another conversation about this when I've looked into what you're alleging more, I promise I will look into I'm not alleging anything. Thing. <laughs> I'm I'm citing news for you, and I'm I showed you a video. I'm going to finish what I'm saying. What I think a problem with your show is, and I think I think this is, <clears throat> yeah, Tim, what I was hoping we could talk about today is how you moved from Occupy Wall Street, which one of my critiques of Occupy Wall Street is there was a lot of, I think, I don't want to say conspiratorial thinking, but it was not a productive paradigm of what, of why wealth inequality is where it is in the United States. And I think there is a part of your thinking that falls into false equivalence and to believe there's some huge conspiracy when I don't what think conspiracy? that's always here. I think in this particular case, Hypothetically, on the Hunter Biden front, if we got unambiguous evidence that Joe knew Hunter was doing business deals based on Hunter promising actions for business partners from his father, and then Joe continued to bring his son with him on political trips or ping a plug with him, which is have a significant ethical violation. Ethically, almost certainly. Legally, mm, I don't know if there are laws against that, but like ethically, that would be abhorrent for sure. If, uh, if the president of the United States was pushing policy just to personally enrich his family, I think ethically it would be a horrible thing. I don't know if it's illegal, but it would be, yeah, it would definitely be ethically horrible. Case, I think you are magnifying a single event and you're coming to the conclusion that because this phone call was made, this is evidence the Democrats were impeaching Trump in bad faith and that uh, the Democrats are just as corrupt as the Republicans and we had no good reasons for doing this and everything Trump did in Ukraine is justified. And I just, I don't well, think that's I, a Those are argument. a bunch of big leaps. Same stance if Trump did it? Yeah, I don't know if what Trump did was illegal, but ethically important. Like, that's one of the reasons why, like Trump not divesting his stuff, for instance. Like, can a person who has a net worth of a billion dollars act honestly as president of the United States when so much of his financial well-being might be tied up with the relationship with other countries? I don't know if that's illegal. I don't think I ever said Trump should go to jail for that. But ethically, I think it's abhorrent, right? That's, that seems to be so much conflict of interest. Destiny, I'm saying Biden takes no action. He just knows his son is rainmaking business partners by promising action for him. Oh. Um, I don't know if that's, I mean, it'd be unethical on Hunter Biden's part. I don't know if it'd be unethical on Joe Biden's. I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know. That's good. Harry. So you agree, then why aren't you calling for the impeachment of Biden as well? What are you talking about? I mean, it's not a conspiracy to say, fact, Hunter Biden called DC to get Ukraine prosecutor fired for Burisma. Fact, Joe Biden then shortly after flew to Ukraine to get the prosecutor fired. Those are facts. Sure. Those, those are absolute solidified knowable facts not a conspiracy i he did think it. that one of the issues i have with your show is about proportionality and impact and i mm -hmm. think that generally speaking you amplify smaller things to fit a narrative that you want to you uh, want uh, to uh, talk about to your audience sure, but the president was this impeached. Is a good example a presidential impeachment is a historical event that's right and yeah. i think most democrats felt like nancy pelosi didn't even want to do this right mm -hmm. so uh do you think that it matters that the American people understand the underlying context of what 
this impeachment was about? I think if the Republicans want to make a case against Joe Biden for this, you know, you've got control of the House. Have your day. I well, think it's going to be, I, hold on. I think it's going to be very difficult to talk about this in a way that's going to make most people think Biden is a fundamentally dishonest person. That is my belief. So I talk about the news and news things that happen. I talk about things that I think are important. Mm -hmm. my, I, I don't make a show with the intent of uh, lowering rent prices or anything like that. Right. So when a historical event happens in the news, such as evidence emerges that Hunter Biden was engaged in business dealings and solicited his father for assistance in removing a prosecutor investigating a company for which he was the board of, those are exactly the kind of things that I cover. Okay. And that's probably why my audience is a lot smaller than, say, the likes of Steven Crowder mm -hmm. or, or, or uh, I, I'm, I'm assuming to the Young Turks as well. I mean, they're massive. Yeah. Right? They got w way more subscribers. Yeah, sure. If I, if I came out... Fuck. Now I feel like I should leave this play while I step away so it gets interesting again. Now I feel like it's going to be boring for an hour and a half. Does anything else happen that's of note in here? I don't know if you can watch me and this at the same time if there's anybody that would even know the answer. My final day at PragerU. Why is she leaving? Ladies and gentlemen, today we have a special announcement. No, I am not pregnant. <laughs> no, <laughs> I am not getting married, as many of you guessed. But it is my last day here at PragerU. Let's talk about it. All right, guys, welcome to the show. We are so happy to have you. And as I said before, we do have a very special announcement today. It is my last day here at PragerU, but it is not only my last day here at PragerU, we got Taylor in Nashville. We do, and yes, uh, in a completely unrelated note, it is also my last day at PragerU. Yeah, but, uh, uh, Hamel is not pregnant, but I what? am not pregnant either. <laughs> oh my gosh, I was, imagine completely if Taylor just announced that. That would've been me the first, the first time I was hearing that as well. That actually would've blown my mind. <laughs> um, uh, anyways, guys, uh, we have Cam in the producer's bay. Hello, everybody. And uh, today, we have much to talk about. We have much to discuss, guys. If you were following me on Instagram and Twitter, you saw the announcement that this is, in fact, my last day here at PragerU, and I'm, I'm so happy to have you all here to talk about this exactly. No, the show is not going anywhere, guys. You still get to come chill with us on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and watch all of our videos every other day. The YouTube name might change a little bit. My socials might change a little bit. Some of the pictures might change a little bit. And this set that you see behind you, this would be the last time that you see me on this set. You guys are coming into my home. I'm inviting you into my apartment, into my spare bedroom, uh, where we're gonna like chill, have some tea. I've got some lights set up in there and stuff. The set looks cool. We got a little record player in the back. Maybe we'll play some tunes. And that's where the show is gonna be. Uh, this is like a, I, we'll call it an, an independent step. It's a new adventure. And the message is gonna stay the same. If Prager, you kicked her off, or if she just thought she could make more money independently. <coughs> Sorry, what was? Fuck, I had to sneeze, but that was like a cough. And now I'm like, now I just edged myself.